Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I don't intend to um, labor the points that have already been made by be labor the points that have already been made by um, the members who spoke before me. But I think equally, it is important that as a parliamentary rep for Miku North, that I add my voice in support to this particular motion, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I listened to most members speak about how this is going to affect positively impact their constituents. And I know the Prime Minister made it very clear. He said that there are some people, Mr. Speaker, who would <coughs> I don't know if it's by choice or, or sometimes it's that, that, that tick syndrome where you know you just do something but you don't know how you do it. Sometimes we just say we're not going to support it because <coughs> it's a motion from the St. Richard Bell Party. And that's why every time I stand, I speak, and I speak, I ask that if something is good, we need to stand up and support it and say it's good. Um, I was not there to hear the member for Shozel. Um But even without hearing what his position was, I think, Mr. Speaker, I can say with a certain level of confidence that I knew that he supported this motion as well, as it will have. He asked me whether I'm a guy there, but we've become good friends, and I know what he supports and what he doesn't, and I saw how comfortable he was earlier, so I know that he really supported <laughs> he supported what um, passed. But Mr. Speaker, as a parliamentary representative, you get to appreciate what it is that people go through. Because people trust you, they come and they tell you what their stories are, and they invite you in their homes, when ordinarily they would not invite anybody else there because of the condition of their homes. And they bring you inside and tell you, away, later, Sam, when you you see what I have to put up with. And that motion, Mr. Speaker, does not automatically solve the problem. And you say, it's not like you can just go and get the materials for free. But what it does, Mr. Speaker, it really allows, it gives you an opportunity. Those people, especially those people who are really struggling, they have an opportunity now, Mr. Speaker. What the $100 was giving you before can now be stretched and you can get a lot more for when we, with the removal of the, the vat on the lumber and the cement. And when we think of it, a lot of the people who use or who require, I think, remember for Denry North said it well, he captured it well. You pass and you see the windows, the doors, and some people really want, they really want to, to, to do different. They really want to see something different happen. They, but it's a situation where they cannot. And as I said, this alone does not solve it, but it gives you a greater opportunity. And I'm sure that the constituents, my people of Miku North, would welcome um, this particular motion and what is being, what is happening in this house today. And I don't know how other persons would feel, but I can speak for those people who I represent, those people who come to my office on a day-to-day -day basis, and I can tell you that they would really welcome, and not just them, Mr. Speaker, as the parliamentary representative, I think the prime minister, there is under the housing program, there's an allocation that you are, a small allocation that you're given to, to help your constituents. And now, it used to give me, a, I used to have a lot of nightmares and headaches as to why, how do you go about disbursing this allocation? And sometimes there's a situation where somebody requires two extra sheets of plywood. And it's just a situation where if I was able to help 45 people, I'm now in a position where my 80,000 or my 100,000 for housing allocation, I'm able to now assist 87 people. And these are seven families who are going to be positively impacted. These are seven children who, when the wind is blowing, they don't have to worry about getting fluid because the wind is eating them directly. And as little as it is, it is going to help. And that's why I welcome and I support this bill in its entirety. And Mr. Speaker, this is, when you, you cannot look at this motion in isolation. You have to look at that in a time like July, when we have so many other social um, elements that are going to complement that. You have, I'm sure that before school reopens, we are going to have quite a few people who are going to be engaged in a, a national cleanup program money in their pocket, that sheet of plywood that they're looking for, they're in a position where they're able to buy it. We're going, that is going to be complemented with a back-to-school program. We're going to be assisting children with a back-to-school. So it is not just, we cannot just look at that in isolation or in a vacuum and say, okay, that is being complemented in a time like now, between July and August. You have so many other activities, so many other activities on the social spectrum that are going to be able to help cushion the blues that, that we felt from the inflation and other things. So, we, as I said, when you look at, Mr. Speaker, when earlier this um, 
This afternoon, when the Prime Minister was speaking, I got a little picture of the Prime Minister saying no VAT, no whatever, and I posted it on my status. And Mr. Speaker, I can tell you, within minutes of me posting, somebody gave a joke. I know it was a joke. A man said, send me a voice note and tell me, boy, you happy with that lumber and thing because now you can be loud, so it's jab out. All beat, he said it in a joking manner, but it just shows that people appreciate the gestures that are being made by this government. But on a, but on a more sensitive, on a more sensitive side, Mr. Speaker, I know that there are women listening to, and I'm happy to see the amount of interest that this particular motion has generated. People have sent me messages, quite a few women, Mr. Speaker. I, I was downstairs with the Prime Minister and I showed him some of the messages that I got. And you would think somebody would try to trivialize the removal of VAT on something like sanitary napkins. Someone might try and trivialize that. So that's just, and Mr. Speaker, even, I did not even understand or fully appreciate, maybe because I'm not in the business of buying sanitary napkins. I, I did not fully appreciate what it is. Yeah, my. <laughs> um, but, Mr. Speaker, I really did not appreciate the magnitude of that small gesture. And it's when, today, when I posted my status and I saw so many women send me messages saying, thank you. Thank you for removing the VAT. Then I realized, but I did not know that that, and we're talking about working class women, police officers, teachers, people who are working, and they say that sanitary napkins, or we want to call them period products, have gotten to the point where Prime Minister was right when he said that there are people who have to take a decision as to whether or not they're going to let the pad stay a little longer than it's supposed to, to be able to stretch it as to and whether or not they're in a position to send their children to school. And I don't think that in today's era, Mr. Speaker, that that is a decision that any woman should be confronted with. And I'm hoping that, I think that this is a very progressive step. And even moving forward, I think a few weeks ago, I was in Canada and a debate was to make um, period products available in bathrooms, similar to when you go to the bathroom, you can get tissue to make it available to women. And I thought that was very progressive thinking, and I think that is a direction that we now, as a small island developing state, should aim to get. I mean, we're not going to get there overnight, but that is the first step. So I welcome such an initiative, and, and I applaud the Prime Minister and the government for seeing it necessary to be able to bring relief to these people. And I said, most of the people who really cannot afford that are really the peop are vulnerable people, Mr. Speaker. And having to put up with all the other issues of life, Mr. Speaker, I think, as I said, no woman no girl, no female should be faced with having to make a decision as to whether I buy bread in the morning or whether I can afford pads. So I welcome that and I say I look forward to it too. And I know that all the women um, from Mikunov, and I know I can't speak for all the women from St. Lucia, but all those women who are in my circle and those who send me messages, Mr. Speaker, they also welcome, I can echo their sentiments and say that they welcome such a gesture. So I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that I, 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 I commend the Prime Minister for bringing forward this motion and for the other members for supporting this motion and I know that it will go a long way. It's going to ensure that people have a little more money in their pocket. Their dollar can go a little further and as I said, I'm always inundated, Mr. Speaker, with requests. Every day, every single day, my staff sends me messages about somebody brings an open bill but someone just wants to see a sister say, just want a dirty shit plywood. <laughs> Not about a few weeks, three weeks ago and I'm just thinking of it three weeks ago, I'd have spent somewhere, or I'd have written to SSDF to assist me with housing for a particular gentleman in my constituency who needed to just build a toilet. And it would have cost me maybe in the range, the materials would have come maybe to the tune of five or six thousand dollars, thereabout. And I'm sure SSDF would have more money in their coffers, even under their own housing assistance program, because that material lease would go down by about 12.5%, which would mean they would take a six thousand dollar bill, would mean you would take somewhere in the range of maybe six hundred and something dollars off it and that can go to assisting somebody. So I'm happy that right now our dollar can, our, we get more, more materials, they would say more buck for a dollar, but we get more materials for our dollar now. You have more spending power as it relates to purchasing of materials. Um, and I know that there are quite a few people in the constituency who actually um, postpone and they have been waiting. So they postpone making their purchase because they really want to do something 
and they figure, okay, here's what I'm going to get a brick. So as much as somebody may try to trivialize it and say that people don't eat plywood or those people who really need the plywood, where they actually getting the money to buy it, I know that there are people in my constituency who need the plywood and they're actually waiting on August 2nd to see. And it's going to cause, it's a, it's a domino effect. There's going to be, you're going to see, there's a situation that we, we anticipate that we're going to see a little more movement as it relates to construction workers. Somebody might be more inclined now to put a little piece on their house because they feel, okay, now, now I have an opportunity. So I think these bricks really work well for the most important people or the most vulnerable people in the um, country. So I welcome this, Mr. Speaker, and I just want to um, lend my voice in support to this motion. So thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.